Making a life worth living and a retirement worth having is about the people in our lives. It's about the people that we long to see. It's about the people that we keep holding on and praying that will come back to us. And it's literally about the people that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. There are people in our daily life, like our colleagues, that we hope that we're having a good relationship with. There are people that are in our family that we pr probably chose to be there, especially if they're children, then we've obviously produced them and they're a part of our lives and are part of our responsibility. But there are other people that come into our life that really move us in our souls and move us in our hearts and really tackle a lot of interesting topics with them in our minds when we have conversations with them. And those people linger in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls for the longest of time. They literally play with us in our own way in that they help our souls to soar. They literally are the loves of our life, if you will. They're the people that we openly love, that no matter what we feel, no matter how upset we can get with them at times, no matter how many foul words we might say on an occasion, out of frustration towards them, we still openly, generally love them. And that's what our family of choice is like. When we have a birth family, that can often be different. They can be challenging partners in our life. They can be people who don't believe in us. They can be people who put us down. They can be people who literally move us in directions we don't want to go. There's other people, though, that raise us up and help our vibrations to literally soar higher and higher in the world in which we live. They're the people who see the best in us. They're the people who long for the best for us, and openly they pray for the best for us. They're the people who come alongside of us when struggles are going on. They're the people who stand behind us when we need to place a, a bra to brace ourselves. And they're the people who will put their hand out in front of us to pull us out of the deep waters that we sometimes can sink with them. You see, it's those moments in life that we know about. I know at one moment in life I failed a friend of mine, and I feel it every single day. I feel the loss of her. I feel the loss of her soul in mine, and I feel the loss of her spirit in my life. When I talk about that friend, I openly have the right to do it. And she is someone that I adore, she's someone that I love, and she's someone that I long to see. She is, in fact, my legal heir, and I have the right to say so, so that no matter what happens to me, someone knows that there is someone that I have loved, that I have loved long enough to provide that sort of a resource if something should happen to me. When I talk like this, it's because I'm facing something rather monumental in my life. You see, I was looking for help a long time ago, and I went to a place seeking help because the local folks just wouldn't help. They just kept making a monkey out of my life. You see, none of them ever thought about what could happen to their lives if they didn't do things correctly, if they didn't follow the law, they didn't think about how federal law applied, and they certainly didn't think about how human rights law might impact them in the long term. You see, when we start monkeying in someone's life, we actually start to adjust our own. We start to make differences in people's lives that don't make sense to the God above. And when that happens, we start to make ourselves a liability. Not only is there a traditional legal liability for what we've done, but there's also a liability to the Lord. And for anyone who has a faith, or anyone who has a spirit and a soul, or anyone who believes that there's a Heavenly Father or a Divine Mother out there, then openly you have to pay attention to the fact that you are not in control of other people's lives. When we openly and generally pray for something to happen and come to pass, come to pass and then it literally does, we're almost flabbergasted because we feel as though our prayers have been answered. When it comes to pass, but the Lord says, not yet, it's so hard to sit and wait through it. It's literally one of the most painful processes there is because you're sitting there going, Lord, didn't I pray enough? Didn't I literally talk enough? Didn't I literally listen enough? Didn't I little, literally submit enough to you, Lord, for this to come to pass? But the bottom line is that there are still people involved and human beings do their free will instead of always doing what God's will is. You see, God's will and human will are totally different things. God's will is something that the Lord puts in our hearts and our minds and our soul to do that is right, that is correct, that is loving, that is kind, that is peace-oriented, and that literally helps to make peace in the land. The things that are man's will or human will is literally the things that create discord, the things that make fun of others, the things that put disparity in people's lives and literally don't pay any attention to what's going on for someone else because we're so selfishly involved in our aspect of life for our own selves. We literally think, I'm not going there again, I'm not doing this again, but we're not hearing the call of the Lord saying, it's time. It's time to put things right. It's time to make things better. It's time to make amends. It's time to do our part at creating peace in the land instead of creating animosity and difficulty and hatred toward the Force. You see, the Force is something we talked a lot about in Star Wars days. We're not talking about it as much, even though that series has continued on and on and on and on with the blessing of George Lucas, who produced the whole thing in the beginning. 
But I believe what he was talking about was the alliances that we have with either the people of light and goodness or people of dark and darkness. And when we align ourselves with people in darkness, we literally get stuck in the treasury of it for months and sometimes years. There are literally people who are still battling out in divorce and other things because they align themselves with the wrong forces. And then there are people who are in the light who literally make millions of dollars because they chose to go into the light, they chose to stay in the light, they chose to uplift lives, and they literally get accolades from the most famous people around the world for it. Yet there are small potatoes folks who don't get any help at all. They literally go into difficulties and they can't reach one person on the phone to simply say, help, I need some help, and actually get a real live person to say, sure, no problem, that is a simple thing to solve. Providing someone transportation to some place is a really easy fix. Providing a new download of a certain source on a computer is an easy fix. Making sure theft doesn't go on in the land is actually an easy fix. It's all about what we train our children to understand about the law as well as what we train ourselves to regard as the law. You see, when we think we have the right to steal things from someone, we're literally saying, if I can do it to you, then you can do it to me. And that sort of changes people's perspective when they start to think about what could happen to them in response, not by that person that they're doing it to, but by someone else in the future who literally says, okay, you monkeyed with that person, so now we're going to monkey with you to see how it feels. There's also another situation that goes on that where people think they know who's been monkeying with them, but it's not them at all. So they go after retaliating against somebody who didn't do anything wrong whatsoever. But they're looking for a person to blame is not true. They're looking to find justice in the land. And finding justice today is awfully difficult. We so desperately need a president who really understands the concept of law and understands the concept of justice, but also understands the concept of compassion. That sometimes the laws don't make sense to the way that people live their lives. And openly, we have to pay attention to that because in long-term aspects of a human being's life, the most important things that a person is trying to accomplish, literally, is to produce a life worth living and a retirement worth having. They're not looking for someone to make fun of them. They're not looking for someone to listen to them. They're not looking for anything other than to make that life long worthwhile. You see, I just had a kind of a shock today because I learned that a famous actor that I sort of liked as an actor has passed. He is about my age, and it sort of brought to me the morbidity of life, that life is short. And when we have people we love and we desperately want to tell them how much we love them and why we love them, it's hard to have to wait. It's hard to have to wait to tell them how much we love them because we never know how, what will happen in life. Life is fleeting, as they say, and the truth is that we have moments of time to tell someone how much we love them, but if they've set it up to be a mockery situation and the Lord says don't go because of that possible abuse, we don't go. If the person comes to us in a loving light and literally says, I'd like to talk now, I'd like to give us a chance now, that's something else entirely. When someone makes a mockery out of someone's love, no matter what that love is, no matter who it's for, no matter what flavor, persuasion, or lifestyle it represents, that person's mockery is an abomination to the Lord. You see, the Lord puts into people's lives their love. No one else does that for them. They might do it a little bit themselves. They might choose the wrong loving partners because they're not listening to God. And they're thinking they can reproduce something in someone else that they couldn't reproduce or produce in a person in the first place. You see, real love is one of those things that never flails. It is patient, it is kind, it literally waits its turn. And it openly hopes and prays that the one that it loves will find itself again. It's one of the hardest things they say. If you love it and let it go, it'll come back to you. Not always, because people have free will. And they often destroy the love that God puts in a person for them, literally with their own stupidity, their own selfishness, and their own ungodly nature of wanting a certain thing in a certain look at a certain time with a certain amount of money attached to it. And the bottom line is that's not love. That is literally a negotiation. It's not the love that the Lord provides. You see, the love that God provides is unconditional. And the person who loves you the most is the unconditional lover of your life. That unconditional lover is also the one that the Lord chose for you. And that's the hardest lesson of all, that the unconditional lover, in terms of an actual significant other, is the one that the Lord chose for you. The one that just tolerates everything you do, that's not the same. The one who will occasionally rebuke you, the one who will occasionally shame you, the one who will occasionally talk naughty to you, the one who will occasionally talk dirty to you, the one who will occasionally swear at you, that's the one that the Lord chose for you. Now, I can talk about this till I'm blue in the face and I can upload these videos, but someone will eventually try to knock it down. I had several other videos talking about true love out online, and someone decided that they had the lawful right, not really, illegally actually, to remove those videos from my video channel. 
I never gave anyone permission on my website, and I certainly didn't give someone the right to dim this down while I'm working. You see, that's what monsters who sit at pews out in the library do. That's what monstrous librarians do, and that's what people who shouldn't be on someone else's work do. It's illegal, it's immoral, and it's illicit. And frankly, it's just part of cybercrime that we have to get on top of. You see, the greatest cases of the world can be solved is totally true, but also the ways to protect ourselves is to literally recognize that when a person's online, when they're doing their thing, when they're doing their bit, it's their intellectual property. It's not yours to play with. So when I finish up this audio file, I'm going to say to you, look here, I'd like to tell you how much I care about you, but unless you're talking to me, it's hard to do. I'm pretty straightforward about those things. If you've been kind and considerate to me, then I'll be kind and considerate back. If you show me great service, then I'm going to tell your boss you did great service. Because we all need accolades in, in the world to get higher up in our careers, to move further on in life, excuse the itch. But openly, I am being as transparent as possible. I'm literally a homeless man trying to move his life forward after lots of hacking, lots of attacks, and lots of people stealing his property. Literally stealing him blind. And that's pretty true. My eyesight's sort of failing. So I'd like to see the one that I love, but it's been hard to do. And I'd really like her to come now because life is short and it's time for me to tell you how much I love you. Well, this has been Blake Ensign of Blaze Communications LLC saying thanks for listening.